Hey everybody, welcome to the Glasses Push. My name's Chuck, and today we're talking about Red Shirts by John Scalzi. So who should care? Why should you read this? A while back, I reviewed John Scalzi's short story, The Dispatcher, uh, in which my main criticism was that the story didn't focus enough about on the intriguing hook focusing more on hitting the beats of a typical detective novel as opposed to focusing on what made the story actually unique. However, Red Shirts is an unabashed riff on Star Trek at a start and kind of just takes it into ridiculous directions. So, Clearly anyone who is a uh, Star Trek fan or, or just really a genre fan even, there's, a, there's quite a few beats that can be appreciated by people who haven't religiously followed Star Trek and uh, I definitely count myself among those. I've watched uh, most of the movies but uh, uh, haven't really touched any of the TV shows and I still uh, got great enjoyment out of this. If you are into the audiobook thing, uh, Will Wheaton narrates the audiobook for this one. So if you're a fan of his, uh, Will Wheaton definitely uh, brings it and he's got his uh, typical uh, manic energy that he, he really brings to the audio recording. So that's enjoyable there. And lastly, uh, if you are a fan of Ernest Cline, either uh, Ready Player One or Armada, it definitely fits into the arena of semi-meta, self-referential, uh, uh, pop culture obsessed fiction where it's so close bordering on fan fiction. Uh, so right in that territory. So if you enjoy that type of work, uh, you will enjoy this as well. But enough of that, what did I think? So, as I mentioned, I felt that in the short story I encountered with John Scalzi, the issue was when you have a good idea, you should fully explore it. I don't believe the dispatcher did that. However, that is what really makes Red Shirts a success is that it takes its ridiculous idea and it never lets it go and never drops focus. In fact, I can say that that is basically all the book does is one big play on an idea. It is incredibly fast paced. It's a very, very quick read and there is very little in the way of character development. This is straightforward dialogue plot. There's really no time for the details and the details don't matter. There's a fun concept here, uh, you know, basically set in the Star Trek world and then just progressively getting more wacky, meta, and self-aware. That's all I really want to say but it is exceedingly clever in that regard. Uh, it is a very funny book that, for the most part, doesn't take itself particularly seriously, and both uh, me as a reader and the characters themselves both treated the plot with equal incredulity, and that's what makes it so fun. It is entirely unbelievable, but uh, John Scalzi just really owns what this book is, which is a campy, fun play on an idea. While the plot is very propulsive and doesn't really give you a lot of time to stop in any one particular moment, that really is a good thing because you don't realize how thin the, the actual writing is in, until you look back. Almost a young adult in terms, in terms of tone and writing style. It's 
really all about hitting these plot beats. So that works to its favor, but also to its disadvantage because while the concept is fun, sometimes you want to just enjoy uh, the poetry of language or sink a little deeper into uh, the plot or the world. But the idea is, is that you're dealing with a very familiar world and it's exploring a unique concept within the world. So there are a lot of assumptions made uh, by the author, uh, which basically leave you just to enjoy an idea and you are not saddled with needing to decipher any language or really new location. This hits everything you're familiar with. Not every book needs to be Shakespeare. Not all characters have to be developed at Stephen King-esque lengths. And, and that's fine. This book is very comfortable with what it is, which is vapidly shallow, but entertaining. However, uh, the kind of subtitle for the book is a novel with three codas. Where the book gets really interesting, actually, is in its codas. After going through a fast-paced story, you get three vignettes that add to the story and really focus on uh, particular details uh, or a particular character. There's uh, one coda that is actually written in second person. So you, in essence, become one of the characters in the story and live in it more. And that is where the real surprises from a more literary standpoint come. You finally feel the weight of uh, certain plot elements that are as quickly brought up as they're settled in the main novel, but when you live in these small moments, uh, the, the consequence feels a lot greater. These codas are where he shows, no, I, I can be really creative with language, that there is substance to back it up, and uh, it was a highly enjoyable surprise to see that. So what would I rate it? If I was just going off the main section of the book, it would be a little more middling, perhaps uh, low 70s type score. You know, just a fun popcorn book with a cool idea, but overall nothing special. The three codas evolve the ideas of the book beyond just something funny, beyond the very superficial romance and, and characters. So this book is just above which I think pushes the book just above average. I'm going to give it an 81. Exceedingly creative, very quick read. Until the end, not a lot of meat to it, but that's okay, not every book needs to be that. Still, especially if you're a Trekkie, it is very fun. That's, that's the best word to use. You be smiling, you'll be laughing, you'll have a good time. And at the end of the day, that is not a bad thing to get out of a book. That's all I have. Uh, are there any other John Scalzi books that you've read that you've really enjoyed? What were your thoughts on this book? You have any suggestions of other books within this kind of meta fan fiction genre for me to check out? Uh, I'd love to talk with you about it, so definitely comment, like, subscribe, you know, send maybe a copy of this video to your grandma. I don't know why uh, she'll be confused. Maybe don't do it, but, you know, call your grandma. 
So for the now ironically titled glasses push, uh, this is Chuck wishing you well. Until next time, out.